The health ministry fully supports the recommendations put forward by a work group to take a firm stand against abusive behaviour. Among them is the adoption of a policy which will not tolerate abuse of any kind against healthcare workers. And this comes after a work group engaged more than 3,000 of them. Over 60% said that they witnessed or experienced abuse or harassment in the past year. Now, first of all, what actually constitutes abuse and harassment? A proposed set of guidelines will establish their definitions, how to report such acts effectively and what consequences perpetrators will face. A training, that is also key, so that staff would have the relevant skills to prevent potentially abusive situations, as well as de-escalate tense situations with patients. Uh, a national public education campaign will be launched by MOH Holdings, that's later this year, and it aims to align expectations of the roles of healthcare workers and also to promote respect for them. We also hope that uh, this recommendation, when implemented, uh, will be monitored, you know, of the effectiveness and tweaked along the way. At the same time, we also encourage our healthcare workers to do more reporting because there is an issue of under-reporting. We encourage them to come forth and uh, be brave enough to report these incidences so it can be addressed at the very root of it. Discharging abusive patients who do not require urgent medical care. This is also among the recommendations that a work group is calling for to deter and put a stop to abusive behaviour. While healthcare workers support these proposals, they also hope the hospitals too will play their part in protecting their staff. Ravi Chandran Ganapati has been working at Ng Teng Fong General Hospital's emergency department for seven years. During the pandemic, he had to care for his patients whilst enforcing stricter visitation rules. That was when one encounter with a patient's caregiver left a mark on him. So when she went to the main lobby, uh, she made a registration about the patient. Then the patient was not there. The patient was in another place, but they couldn't visit. Because it's a COVID protocol. Angrily, she approached me. She used all the abusive language at me. She's also not happy with my answer. So after that, I turned, I turned side and I turned back. She slapped me. According to findings from a work group, frontline staff like Ravi are more likely to experience cases of abuse or harassment. For instance, being shouted at by patients or caregivers. Despite this, only around a fifth of healthcare workers surveyed reported the abuse to their institutions. While these cases are caused by a minority, the health minister says it is enough to significantly affect morale. We therefore also need an efficient reporting process so that the healthcare worker can escalate the incident and seek recourse. They should be given updates and closure on the outcome of the report so that they do not feel helpless and alone when encountering abuse. While many of these processes are already in place, they will need to be improved. The work group also called for clear consequences for people who harass healthcare workers. This could mean that abusive patients who do not require urgent medical care may be discharged. And to ensure that such efforts to protect staff are upheld, hospitals here have to play a part too. For patients who need ongoing care, uh, after having given them an indication of what behaviour is not acceptable, and if the behaviour persists or it escalates, um, then what we do uh, is we get the medical and the nursing teams to come together, sit with the patient and issue them with a warning. We wouldn't necessarily limit care, but we would limit uh, the patient's access to the ability to continue to harass uh, or abuse our staff. In the second half of this year, the Health Ministry will work with public health care clusters to develop and implement the policy against abuse.